Good morning, everyone. Just a little technical challenge there. So good morning to you. I'm Dr. Lori Davis, host of the Today Show from the Disability Channel. And today is Fun Friday. I don't have a particular guest today, but I've got a few guests who are going to pop in because on Fridays we like to just uh, do whatever comes up because everything else is pretty streamlined and theme lined. So also on Wednesday during Wellness Wednesday, Kay, Dr. Kay Sheffield and I talked about food, not food, but eating properly, eating healthy food. And for today's world, we're very fast paced and a lot of people don't have, they have lots of excuses why they don't eat properly. So if you'd like to have that information, then just check us out on YouTube or Lori Davis Facebook page and you can see that show. So today we do have regulars who stop by and visit us. And I thought, you know, I need to just put out a very quick invite to them so that they can come in and we can see who they are and um, and share with us today, too. So I'm going to share my my top 10 favorite things to make. And they're simple and they're easy and they're fun and they're delicious. And uh, Dr. K is coming in as well. She's going to share a few. But let me introduce you to Kathy Bell. You'll see Kathy texting a lot on our shows. She has always very good questions to ask us. And so she's here in person today. So bringing her in here. Good morning, Hello. Kathy. Good morning. Hi. Hi. How are you today, Dr. I'm Lord? doing great, except okay. a little, a little uh, senior moment there. But uh, anyway, uh, welcome to the show, Kathy. You're such a supporter and you do a lot of work for us behind the scenes. And so it's really nice for people to put a name to the face because you always have really great questions i try sometimes they're pretty stupid questions but thank no. you <laughs> there's no such thing kathy there's no okay. such thing as a stupid question so um today we have some friends dropping by intermittently and um, we're going to share some fun facts around food and and some little kitchen tips that i also have that i've learned over the years uh, to help freeze food keep food safe keep it fresh and uh, I see Jay is here to join us right now as soon as he's coming in. So, yeah, it's a beautiful day here in the great Northwest. How's Burlington doing? Always I see you had some floods. It's sunny and it's about 80 degrees. Mm -hmm. uh, no wind. I took my dad out and he's got this roller turn where he can, he can use it as a walker or he can turn around and sit in it. You know, it's got pedals for his feet. So we walked along the waterfront, you know, to the hotel and back and all the, and he met all the dogs, you know, the dogs were, yeah, it was nice. Nice. Cool. So I'm all cool. sweaty now. Whew. Well, that's all right. We'll all be that way before the day's out. It's been hot here all week and it's going to continue to be hot. So um, no break, I don't think, coming up anytime soon. Oh, look who's here. Oh. We better behave ourselves. Our boss is here. Oh. <laughs> good morning. Morning, morning, morning. Yeah. How are you? We're good. I'm good. Kathy's good. We're Hi, good. Kath. Hi. If he happened to look out the window, his condo is about less half a mile, not even half a mile from my parents' place. So he would see me, my dad, me pushing my dad along along the waterfront. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, pretty crazy. I know. So I'm on my phone. I don't know. We've had horrible technology problems, but have you guys noticed it's happening right now all over the world? Like, have you seen the airports? Mm -hmm. All the systems are down. So I'm on my phone because my computer, I don't know what's going on. It hasn't been working for the last, well, yeah, since this morning. So I had to jump on. I had to do an interview this morning with uh, Wild Child Records. Uh, so I had to jump on my phone. I had a really... I had a really nice interview with a uh, a female trucker who's a musician from Nashville. So she drives an 18-wheeler Peterbilt. That's her day job. That's her day job. So I just talked to her now. We interviewed her, and she was at a truck stop sitting in her rig. Like, so cool. Like, And she's a, a, a musician from Nashville. Her name is Marie Norris. And uh, she's got that country twang, and it's just, it was a really interesting interview. I was, I don't know if I was more enthralled by her being a trucker, 
<laughs> or or a musician from Nashville. I was like, so we're going to be doing, just to let you guys know, we're going to be bringing back, or not bringing back, but it's been dormant for a little while, my TDC Classic Cars show. So we're going to be bringing back TDC Classic Cars, and we're going to be doing either daily or weekly or you know, semi daily, buy would buy daily, whatever. A uh, little snippets of her singing a cappella in her rig and telling us where she is. Yeah. So, yeah. So today she was in Missouri. You know, we just did the, the introduction interviews, but every uh, every day or two, we're going to do a little, like a little 30 second or two minute snippet of her singing a cappella while she's driving, maybe, or we're going to, you know, pull over on, a, you know, one of the truck stops or. So it's going to be it's kind of going to be kind of cool, and then we're going to uh, get in there and blow up Nashville. So nice, <laughs> yeah. So this is good. So how are you guys doing? Out of there, yeah. So we need some interviews out of there. Yeah, everything's so, good. Yeah, everything's good. Um, today we've got some gals showing up, and we're just going to uh, have like an open mic and whatever comes up for us. But in the mix of that, uh, I love to cook, so. We were talking on Wednesday about eating properly and Dr. K and I. So today I thought I would share my top 10 recipes. And uh, if we won't share the recipes on the show, we'll just talk about the product. But then if anybody wants the recipes, they can contact me and I'd be happy to send them out to you because some of them are over a hundred years old. Very nice. You know what I'd like to do also, if you guys have a chance on your show, you mean you might have a packed show, but I would love for Kathy to tell our audience viewers her journey on the disability channel about regarding our program and how you found us and what your role is now and all the new friends and associates and, you know, all, all that great stuff. If you guys have a chance, because it just opens up more opportunities because you know what? And you know, Kathy and all that, like there's probably a lot of disabled people or, or veterans or whatever that are watching our show and are probably saying, you know, I'd love to kind of get involved with the channel, but I don't really know what to do. And I have a disability and I'm a little, you know, I'm a little shy or I'm a little reserved to, you know, let people know. So I just want to let people know who are watching that I have an incurable illness called familiar Mediterranean fever. Our programs are meant for persons with disabilities, so we're very, you know, considerate, very kind, very patient. Uh, we have professionals, and we have people who can attest to our programs, like Kathy, to say, hey, try something new. Go ahead, Kathy. Everybody has a disability. I I met um, yes, I do. on our show who set up the cameras. And they have some disabilities. You know, we're all human. We all have funny quirks. It's 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 funny sometimes. It's um, it's, it, uh, it you come away with a good feeling. Mm -hmm. That's well, great. I think we should. I think we should actually, uh, while we're talking about this, uh, why don't we do a show this uh, week uh, on uh, and, and interview some of the people from the channel, like Lewis and Simon and. Kathy, and just have a little team Jay. there. Yes, whoever you want. JD, I'm not that Jay, that JD. <laughs> okay. That would be great. Yeah, that would be great. So I'm going to pop off, but I wanted to, I wanted to go on, come on quickly, and I'm going to, and I have been promoting the show, so I'm going to share this and all that. But yeah, I really thank you guys. Have a great Friday. Uh, Kathy, we'll talk later, whatever. I want everybody to know Kathy is, she is a MacGyver, she can do it all. You can do it all, so I, I, I thank you, Kathy, for that. I, I get in trouble sometimes. <laughs> no, no, you're good. You're really good. You're really good. So, okay, ladies, okay. have a great day. Have a great Friday. Yeah, thank you. Okay, Bye. we'll talk. Bye-bye. Bye. There you go. We never know when the boss is going to land, so we've ah. always got to be, like, on our best, right? Because he can show up any time. And, Kathy, I think that's a great idea. I'll get you to... Uh, organize uh, you and i'll organize the day maybe we can talk about that on monday and get a crew in here so uh that you can share your stories but why don't you just give us a little thumbnail of your story uh right now and um how you got involved with the uh, disability channel okay i will try um first of all i wear two cochlear implants and i got my cochlear implants relatively late in life so I'd be doing a lot better 
if I had my cochlear implants in my around two years old as compared to getting them when I'm getting two by the time I'm 50. So I'm a lot older now and um, I, I was unemployed. I, I'm sort of like a WordPress web designer and I was not doing anything at the moment. And I saw that um, I love taking courses and I saw that Owlware had a course on um, a media program course on web design and all sorts of other media related things. And so I, um, I just signed up for it and it, it's been, um, they have a lot of connections, you know, it's as long as you're moving in some direction, things will open up for you and mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, yeah. yeah, cool. So, well, I'd love to hear the whole story and, and the whole story from some of our other team members as well. And then I'm sort of like the new kid on the block. I, you know, I've not been with the disability channel for very long, but um, I was with other networks along the way, but uh, I'm really enjoying this particular channel and network. I just feel like we're doing something very profound and positive and um, that brings me a lot of joy. So uh, I'm excited to be now doing seven shows a week for the disability channel or at least not all myself but as part of so so seven hours of my week are blocked off for uh, showtime and then of course prepping behind the scenes and getting guests lined up and uh, it's it takes time but it's all worth it to me so yeah <laughs> So let's take turns. I'll share one and then I'll have you share one. And so, um, and I'm going to have a little story behind each one because some of these recipes came to me uh, like an adventure. And uh, the most recent one that I'm going to share, um, at the end of June, I traveled to Northern Saskatchewan and I worked at a resort. I worked with uh, seven staff members from the uh, HR and finance department and I did a two-day retreat for the staff and the resort uh, is it there's many buildings on the lake and it's um, it's a camp but it's more like a resort so we would go over to the dining hall to eat and I got to meet the chef and he's been there since the resort opened five and a half years ago he too is disabled um, and uh, but he is like the bomb when it comes to cooking holy the food i gained five pounds while i was there <laughs> for three days oh. and we had moose meat and we had you know all the traditional first nations food it was fresh fish out of the lake i mean the the fish were caught that day and you're eating them that night it was amazing so he had uh i i got to talk with him and be friends with him and all of a sudden there was this big, huge pan of beautiful cinnamon buns on the breakfast buffet. And, and I went, whoa. And then the next day was, um, they have a traditional bread called bannock and you can either deep fry it or you can serve it, you know, uh, plain. Anyway, he uses the same basic recipe to make bread, to make bannock rolls, to make cinnamon buns to make anything you want to make from a basic bread dough and delish. So I said, you know, it's very, very, you have to be very careful when you ask a chef for a recipe. <laughs> but we had become pretty good friends while I was there because we talked back and forth. And so I said to him, uh, would you be willing to share your Bannock recipe with me? Because I would love to make it. Well, sure. So he, 
He said, I'm, I'm just about to make some if you want to watch. I said, okay. And he had a big bowl. Oh my gosh, it was the size of a, I don't know, it was really large. One of those big commercial stainless steel bowls. Six eggs, cream, mm. oil, yeast, of course, and then your flour. And this makes like a huge, big, but he said you could put it, you know, you could cut it in half or thirds. But he said the secret ingredient is the cream. So I went, oh, wow, because that makes it really light when you put those eggs and cream together like a cake. Woo, beat that up. So I'm going to make some as soon as it cools off. I haven't made that yet, but that's my next move. Oh, how much cream? I think it was a cup of cream, mm -hmm. like a half a liter. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. how, how much flour? I'm getting an idea of how big. Yeah, half of a 10 pound bag. Oh, okay. Five pounds. Sounds so tasty. I, I know. So I'm going to cut it in half. And then you put all that in a big bowl and just stirred it up mm -hmm. and let it rise. And poof, we had cinnamon buns. That bannock, that deep fry, then you, some of it, you know, like you deep fry donuts. He deep fried that, and I made a dessert out of it because he had blueberry sauce and strawberry sauce and whipped cream. So I just made myself a little dessert with the bannock on the bottom. No wonder I gained five pounds. Holy cow, Gabby. What is bannock? It is a traditional bread. Mm -hmm. uh, one type is without yeast. It's kind of like a biscuit dough. Oh. And, but this one is, has yeast in it and you use it for frying. You can deep fry it once you make this consistency. So uh, they make it and they use it for hamburger buns, hot dog buns, um, any, you know, kind of their bread, their special bread. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Mm. So, um, so you, what is something that you like to cook? Um, well, today I'm taking a zucchini zucchini pie oh. you, yeah you know those pillsbury bake-off recipes used to yes. they have those little booklets yes well, there's a zucchini pie recipe in there and oh, wow. yeah and i had it calls for about four cups of sliced zucchini and about two eggs and mozzarella cheese and oh. so and you know some spices, mustard. Mm -hmm. Mix all that up, and that's the filling. And I don't make my own pie crust. I get to buy the pie crust. Mm -hmm. So I add the pie crust. You know, make yeah. it pie crust, and pour in the filling, and it's delicious. Everybody that loves. That sounds delicious. That yes. sounds delicious. Yeah. Awesome. Well, the next thing I'll share is a recipe that I have that's over 100 years old, okay. probably more like 150 by now. And this comes from my childhood. And my dad's people, my dad's mom passed away when he was only 14. So his aunties and uncles, he was very close to them. And they lived on a farm. So he, when, when we were little, my dad would take us out there to visit. And it was kind of like uh, kind of creepy when you were little, you know, you, you, you have an imagination and they had these dark green blinds on the windows and it was kind of just very simple. And there was a bathroom out in the barn and, you know, it was just that kind of a place. Oh, but my dad's auntie Sadie, she would say to us, do you kids want a cookie? And we'd say, sure, thank you. And she'd go into the front room, the parlor, where we were not allowed to go only on Sundays. And she had an old fashioned ice box in there. And that's where she kept her bottles of cookies. So she'd come out with a big jar and her favorite one, our favorite one was her ginger snaps. Now I asked my mom for that recipe and she said, oh, I don't have it. She said, you know that if we have a family recipe, we don't give it away. We don't share it. And I was like, what are you talking about? Oh, no, she said, I don't have that recipe. Aunt Sadie would never give us that recipe. And I said, really? 
and Aunt Sadie had never been married or anything, but she loved us kids and always was so kind and sweet to us. And so I said to mom, you know what, mom, you need to ask her. So we finally got the recipe and I make those ginger snaps every Christmas, but they're the kind that they're so, they are a real ginger snap. You cannot bite them. You have to dip them in your tea or coffee to soften them up so you can actually take a bite. They're amazing. Like biscotti. biscotti. Yes, biscotti, that's right. So I remember those cookies though from my childhood and I, I make them every Christmas and they make like, oh man, like, I don't know how many dozen in a, in a, in a batch, but it's a lot. We eat them for a, a month or so, yes. Mm. Yeah. Did she All get right, it? over to you, your turn. So she, so she gave you the recipe. Yeah, um, my, my mom finally got the recipe and it probably was when after my auntie passed away because there were all her recipe books at the farm, her old notebooks with her recipes in them. Um, and that's, I'm quite sure how we got that recipe. That's, that's lovely. That's yeah. Lovely. Mm -hmm. um, okay, I, I have a recipe. I, I haven't made it in years. Um, it was from a cookbook. You know how you can grind nuts to make a flour? Yes. A walnut tort. Oh, wow. A walnut tort. <coughs> and <coughs> it's really good. It's a cake. And you, I've forgotten the recipe, but I, I know where it is. So you take about 12 eggs. I always double the recipe or triple it. So I end up, you know, I have problems with proportions. So I end up having to increase the recipe. And you take, um, about 12 eggs and you separate them. Okay. And, yeah. And you beat the yolks and you add a bit of sugar and then you have, you know, you pulverize the walnuts and make a flour out of it. And you add that to your yolk mixture with the sugar in it and mix that up. And then you had take the whites, the egg white, you know, and you mix that up and you it's not and you make it until the you mix it up the egg whites until it um they're stiff peaks yes like meringue yes and you fold the white meringue liquid into the walnut with the yolk liquid oh wow yeah and it becomes a cake and it is, uh, and you, you know, you put icing on it, your normal yeah. buttercream icing, and it's, it's good. It's. That sounds delicious. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Okay. All right. Let me look at my list here. Uh, oh, I make a wicked spaghetti sauce. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. But my secret ingredient that most people don't know about, they'll say, wow, this tastes really different, but it's, you know. Mm -hmm. And I put cloves in my spaghetti sauce. Okay. And it gives it, uh, makes it snappy. You know, it's not bland tomato and hamburger. And I put green peppers in it and mushrooms. But then I add my spices, you know, my, my cayenne pepper and salt and all that. And then I put in cloves. A teaspoon depending on depending on how large the batch is it might be a teaspoon of cloves it might be a tablespoon yeah. just depending on how large i'm making but uh but yeah that's the, the little secret ingredient that gives it an extra little bit of uh, zip because i don't like a bland tomato taste my mom used to make uh, a recipe and she put cinnamon in there but uh, i like the cloves in the spaghetti sauce mm -hmm. Do you use, um, I, I get Italian seasoning. That's one of my go-to recipes, but I'm not sure everybody would like it because mm -hmm. I put way too much tomato paste in there. Oh you know, yeah. It's, I'm trying to make the sauce thick, but when I put way too much tomato paste, I have to add more spices. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. <clears throat> well, I use, um, I cheat a little bit on the base because, um, uh, I'm not going to, you know, grind up tomatoes and things like that. But 
my very favorite, and I'll put a plug in for them today, my very favorite spaghetti sauce off the shelf in a grocery store yeah. is Hunt's Thick and Rich. Oh. Hunt's okay. Thick and Rich. And okay. then I just get a, a, the same size can of a tomato a sauce. I don't use any paste at all. It's too strong for me. So so I mix the two together, the, the uh, rich Hunt's, rich and thick, mm -hmm. and the uh, an equal amount of a tomato sauce. Maybe sometimes you can get the sauce with basil in it or a little bit of garlic or something. And then I put the two together. And I also add sugar to my sauce. Not a lot, but just it kills the tomato. It kills that acidy taste of the tomato. So, so these are a few tips. But the most beautiful thing about this is I always make more than I need because it takes just as much work to make a little batch as it does a big batch. And then I put it in large Ziploc bags and I flatten it to freeze. So when I freeze my spaghetti bag, you know, it's flat like this. It's, it's like this in your freezer. So I put it in the Ziploc bag, do it up, get the air out, and then spread it around so that it's flat. Mm -hmm. Then when you want some, you just take that flat package, throw it in some warm water, and it's thawed like that. That's good. That's good. Yeah. And that's how I store a lot of my food. Um, if I make baked beans or if I make, uh, uh, geez, even when I buy hamburger, I'll split it up and I'll put it in raw in flat bags. And then it's it's just nice for storing in your freezer. Okay. Can I say one thing? I, I have a secret to spaghetti. I'm sorry, but that's what I make all the time too, spaghetti. I don't make much, but that's one of them. But yours sounds wonderful. Okay, the, the ground beef is important. If you can, if they have, have sirloin ground beef, go for the sirloin ground beef. It's a couple of dollars more expensive, but the meat is so much richer. Okay, there's a tip. I never heard of that doing that i usually buy lean oh yeah yeah i don't like the extra lean it does not make a juicy hamburger okay and that's another thing i do with my hamburger when I'm, i bring it home i i um, do a mixture for my hamburgers hamburger patties mm -hmm. so i put my spices in i chop onion up and then i make my hamburger patties and i put two in a sandwich bag oh and then two in another sandwich bag because there's just the two of us so um at the odd time there'd be three in there but just in the little sandwich bags and that's flat so then that's easy storage and then if we want a hamburger i just pull out one of the little baggies with the hamburgers that already I made they were all <laughs> <laughs> well you know we're busy women we have to we have to uh save time so when i'm in the kitchen i'm always thinking ahead you know making a plan right and i do that with all my soups my chowders i always have make more than i need and then i bag them and then they're so easy to thaw so i don't have a lot of plastic covered lid kind of deals okay very few of those you know all right. Well, let's take a little break, Kathy, uh, because we're going to be bringing some sponsors and advertisers on, and you're going to be one of the people that helps us get them in there. And so um, here's a little, uh, I'm getting people, Kathy, to practice a 30 second ad, like what you have to say, get it into 30 seconds. Something new. A wonderful arrangement of color that will not remind me of you. So I walked out the door and I won't take you back. Somehow I feel like you won't be asking for that as I wander down the lane. Kathy Bell on the show with me today because Kathy is a big support in the background of the show and does a lot of work for us to make the show successful. 
And um, so I didn't have any particular guests today, but isn't it great the way things work out? I never worry about anything because I always know things are going to be fine. And Kathy, you'll see Kathy on the show every day because she's always asking questions and watching the show and, um, and uh, making it very interesting for our guests to have a question to answer. So welcome back, Kathy. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. And we're going to interview Kathy and the staff um, very soon, too, so that you'll get to know we just don't just show up and arrive. There's a, there's a whole lot of work that goes into producing a show. And uh, a lot of times we don't really have any idea of how much work goes on behind the scenes. And today we're sharing recipes. So do you have something else you'd like to talk about, Kathy? I love that tort. Uh, that's wow, uh, that's amazing. amazing. I'll send it to you. Um, mm -hmm. That's about it. That's those are my secret recipes. I'm quite. I will go to. I like going to Fortino's or No Frills for grocery shopping, and I will grab a blue menu mac and cheese already made up. Yeah. <laughs> and pop it in the oven for them. Um, hmm. I have a bit of a health healthy eater i try to be i try mm -hmm. um well, that's okay well that's what came up for us on wednesday in the wellness show you know uh, kay and i were talking about um you know we have access to what we need here in canada how fortunate for us yeah. and so when i hear people complaining about the grocery prices and this and that and even during COVID, when I would go to the grocery store, I would just stop and thank the staff for being there because just even being able to access food. And I know, I remember being a child, we never got strawberries in the middle of the winter. You had to wait until the spring, you know, or uh, certain kinds of fruit or vegetables weren't available to us because of where we lived or whatever. So, um, so what are some of the excuses? We talked about that on Wednesday, why people don't eat properly. They don't have the time. They don't want to cook. They, you know, so, yeah. So I hear you, though, because every once in a while we need a break. You know, we just we just don't want to, I just don't want to cook on a hot day. So that's when we order a pizza, you know. <laughs> I'm going to plug in for Costco. I love Costco. I oh, yeah. They have a lot of nicely prepared ahead of time kind of things, right? That they, you can have, they have this fried um, Japanese fried rice. Oh, have yes. You those? Do you go to Costco? No. No. Okay. Well. I don't have one near me, really. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. Well, they have this Japanese fried rice um, packets in a box, six to a box. It's about $21. That's a lot, but. It's really good, and and it has little bits of vegetables and chicken in it, and you just put the packet in the frying pan, you know, and you have instant Great. rice. And I add more vegetables in it, you know, like pepper, mm -hmm. and salvi, and onion. And my mother just loves it. My dad will eat it too, so that's great. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's great. Uh, something I used to buy, though, years ago at Costco, when I had my uh, retreat center, I bought their chicken pot their chicken pies the big ones oh yes they're delicious mm -hmm. and that made a meal you know with a salad on the side and uh it made several meals for us and then i'd freeze some of it because oh, they come uh they don't come frozen they're freshly made so you buy them in the refrigerated section they're not pre-frozen so you can freeze them once you get them home what do you yeah. freeze them in? I, I don't know what to do with them because they can't eat them all. You know, they yeah. can't eat the whole pie. It's just. So what I do is like I would take that pie and cut it in, in court, you know, in pieces. And once again, my handy little Ziploc bags, I put two pieces in a bag, mm -hmm. label it and put it in the freezer. And then I, if we want a meal, I'll just take two out. So it's hard to cook for one or two people. A lot of us, you know, one, two, three people. And I was used to cooking, you know, bigger meals when we were at home and all of us kids were home and everything we made, you know. And it took me a long time to kind of get that dwindled down. 
to reasonable amounts. But now, of course, you can freeze it and uh, I divide things up. So like if I if we have a roast chicken dinner, um, we'll have that chicken dinner and then I'll take the rest of the chicken, debone the, the carcass and just put that chicken in a baggie and then I have it for making a stir fry or I have it for a chicken burger. So I'm always, I'm all, I always have things planned like that because there are those days when I'm really, really busy and I don't have time to take out uh, and hand cook a meal. Well, here's Dr. K looking very beautiful this morning. Oh my goodness sakes. Good morning. Hi. We can't hear you. Yeah. <laughs> Good morning. Okay, no sound. We don't have any sound. Can you hear us? Oh, she's going to check in here. All right. Well, while she's getting it back on board here, because uh, I've been to Dr. Gay's house in California, and I was her house guest for two weeks, and she is an amazing cook. And uh, But she did let me steal her kitchen for an evening because we had some friends coming to dinner and uh, I wanted to treat her and them. So uh, she let me in her kitchen, which was a big, a big move. <laughs> Morning. Oh, no. <laughs> All right. Well, let's see. What else have I got on my list? Oh, um, Oh, this is a really good one. Good morning, Kay. No. Ah. You're muted now. Now you're unmuted. Check your volume. Your volume button may be down. It's way up there. I can read lips too. There are mute, um, it's your mute, it's a mute, um, for the restream, it's the mute button on, on no, click she's, the mute she's button. okay, yeah, she's okay. Oh. <laughs> well, if you're talking, we can probably lip read anyway. Oh. <laughs> All right. Well, we were just doing a bit of a follow-up, Kay, on our show from Wednesday when we were talking about eating in a healthy way. And uh, I thought, well, just for fun today, we just talk about food and some little secrets and little tips that we have around things that we do um, to prepare healthy food and healthy meals. So, of course, I started out with Bannock. Uh, how unhealthy is that? I don't know, but it was delicious. And I learned how to make it up at the camp the bread. All right. Um, well, another thing that I do, let's see, what else can we share? Oh, poppy seed chicken. Oh, poppy seed chicken. So this is a recipe out of, um, out of my Mary Kay Ash cookbook. Now you all know who Mary Kay is big cosmetic guru. And in the 80s, she put out a cookbook. And I still have my copy. And in there, all the recipes came from the consultants in the company who had families, who cooked for families when they were busy working. But there's one recipe in there called poppy seed chicken. And you take chicken breasts and you cut them up in, you know, one or two inch pieces so they're small pieces like a chicken nugget and then you make a mixture two cans of uh, cream of chicken soup and a container of sour cream and you mix that together and a couple of tablespoons of poppy seeds and you mix that in with the sour cream and then you spread it over the chicken and you put it in the oven. That's it. 
That's all there is to it. And you can make a small batch with one can of soup and a small thing of sour cream, or you can make a bigger batch and it freezes beautifully. And then when it comes out of the oven, you can top it up with some shredded cheese, cheddar cheese or whatever kind of cheese you want. But it's so easy and simple and delicious. What I put on the top uh, sometimes too is grated cheesy sort of Ritz crackers, you know, crumb that up and put that on top and that gives it a nice texture, but it's delish. It's one of my go-tos, especially if I'm having a crowd, if I'm, if I've got company coming. How are you doing, Kay? No, you can't hear you, but you're here, but you're here. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> you oh. can put stuff in the chat. Yeah. Kathy? About, uh, um, sound, mute, the sound, sound key on the computer. K may not know where that is, so I don't know. It's, it's, um, well, we won't spend too much time on that, but you, you texted it to her. Yeah. Okay. Everything's on. Well, how come you're looking so, yeah. So how come you're looking so beautiful today? Okay. Were you going somewhere? <laughs> Here. <laughs> well, that's good. You're not supposed to be talking today, I guess. You're supposed to be listening. Yeah. So yeah, poppy seed chicken. I always I always tease myself and say, this is how I get my drugs, my opiates. I make my poppy seed chicken. Oh. <laughs> uh, let's see, what else have we got here? Oh, baked beans. Does anybody like homemade baked beans? Uh, you mean um like uh like similar to canned beans only yeah but you make your own i love beans yeah i mean i know they're a little cause you a little distress in your digestive system but i absolutely love beans and they're good for you yes so when i moved from the now you wouldn't think living in one country that you'd have cultural issues but i did when i moved from the east coast to the west coast I couldn't find certain things that I used to be able to get in Nova Scotia to cook with. So one of them was a bean that we use when we make our own homemade beans. And it's called a soldier bean. And it's large. It's quite large. And it has brown and white spots on it. So it's like, that's the best bean ever to make baked beans. So when I go home, uh, a friend of mine, we went to Nova Scotia on a trip to visit my parents and we brought back 40 pounds of beans. They come in one pound bags. So she put 20 pounds in her suitcase and I put 20 pounds in my suitcase and that's how we got them here. And then if my sister goes home, she always brings me back some. And if I go home, I always bring back some. And um, I've just used my last bag, so must be time for a trip home. Kathy? Um, what a bulk food store, a health a bulk food store. I've looked everywhere here. Uh, yeah, okay. yeah. It's like you can't get Tan Cook sauerkraut here either. They make sauerkraut on Tan Cook Island in Nova Scotia. It's very famous. Well, you can't, you know, you can't buy that here. So in my beans, I don't like a tomato base. I like a molasses base. So in the beans, I use molasses, a little bit of ketchup to give it a little tomatoey, um, chop up an onion, put some bacon in there. Mm -hmm. And um, the key to the beans, though, is to get them soft before you put them in the oven. Because once, once you put them in the oven, they do not soften up. So you boil them on the stove until the skins crack and they're softer just before they become mush. You don't want them to be mushy, but that's when you put your sugar and everything on them and put them in the oven for three or four hours and let them bake in there and stir them every once in a while with some water. 
Um, but the key to that is making sure they're soft before you put them in the oven because otherwise they don't soften after that. So that's my baked bean recipe. <laughs> I want that one. I want, want that, that one, one. please. <laughs> and, the, and the one with the poppy seed chicken one. My mom yes, loved and, that one. And Kathy, maybe while, because you're in Ontario, and uh, Kay too, when you're shopping, see if you can find those. They're called soldier beans because they might, you might have them. We don't. Oh. So that'll be a little something for you to look for when you go to the grocery store. Okay. And they're large, they're larger, and they're brown and white together, like a cow spotted. Okay. Yeah. I don't like the little tiny ones. They're like eating bullets, you know. These are these are really cool. Okay. Anything I'm else coming up for you? Oh, sesame chicken. It's poppy seed. Poppy seed. Yeah. Oh. Oh, yes. Poppy, yeah. Poppy seed. Black specks. Poppy seed. Yeah. It's it's lovely. And then I serve that with. Uh, you can either serve it with uh, noodles or you can serve it with rice with a salad on the side makes a nice meal for dinner party maybe Kay, when i come to california when i come back down i'll make some <laughs> we'll do charades today when i come down i'll make some <laughs> this is when sign language would come in handy Kay knows her sign language too right yeah can can she hear us Yes. Yeah, you can hear. Yeah, you okay. Hear us, yeah. Anything else coming up for you, Kathy, around uh, cooking? Because uh, you take care of your parents. So why don't you share with us, uh, you know, what kind of maybe challenges you face with uh, taking care of your parents? Because as we get older, Kay and I talked about that, our appetites change. Well, my mom is getting a little fussier, you know, Um she has an awful sweet tooth now. You know, she will. She doesn't eat much of her lunch. You know, I'm. I will make her a corned beef sandwich, and she and I get. I cut the sandwich in half. You know, because it's quite very large bread slices. So I cut the sandwich in half. My dad gets half. My mother gets half. Um, but the problem is, she will eat maybe two thirds of it and eat the rest. And then she says, do you have anything good for dessert? Oh. <laughs> and she, I, she just, so I tr try to accommodate her a little bit by buying her, you know, those ice cream cones with the chocolate coating and the peanuts on yeah. them. Mm, drumsticks. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, she, her sweet tooth is ferocious. I I try not to buy cookies or cakes. You probably hate me for that, but I I I give her ice cream once in a while and all that. But um oh I I I've been buying cherries a lot lately because she wants yes. to choose. So I give her a cup of cherries, you know? And yeah. 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 But what, and what about your dad? What about your dad? How's oh, he, he eats anything. He doesn't have the same sweet tooth my mom does. Um, mm -hmm. He eats everything. He yeah. takes a long time to eat it. Because, you know, he has some swallowing. I think it's better now, but he has to eat slower because he had some swallowing issues due to the last minor stroke he had about three years ago, four years ago, pre-COVID. Mm -hmm. um, so he eats slower. Um, but he eats pretty well everything. Um, Good for him. Yeah, there. Yeah. yeah, people don't know that when you have a stroke. My husband had a stroke um, when he turned seventy, so that was thirteen years ago. And the first thing to go is your throat muscle here, right here. Oh. That's the first thing that is impacted by a stroke. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. He and. Uh, that's why you know he was in the hospital for a week and he had all pureed food and then they finally gave him a banana and he could swallow that but he has not had a peanut since then um rice i had to sort of you know get him into that but he he used to eat about five pounds of peanuts a week but he doesn't have nuts very often popcorn absolutely not um just different things like that that are hard on the throat to swallow because now even now that's not back to being perfect and 
So when I cook, I make sure everything's soft and, um, yeah, non-crunchy too much. Yeah. But he loves those potato chips, and so he has those, but always with a dip. So they're easier to go down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My dad oh, brings his ice cream. Oh, yes. And I buy those big boxes. Of, we call them polar dips. They're ice cream with chocolate covered on a stick. Yeah. So that's dessert here. So, <laughs> but when I got home from up north and I gained five pounds, all that went. No, no more for a while. <laughs> all right. We should all eat slower, Kay says. Yes. Yeah, that's we eat too fast. We just shovel it in. And what is it? That the stomach doesn't know for 20 minutes that you've actually started eating yet. Right? It takes 20 minutes for that to kick in. So, yeah, it's very, very interesting that way. Yeah. All right. Well, let's see. Shall I share one more quick thing? One more quick tip. Um, you may already know this, but as, of course, uh, Kay has access to fresh fruits and vegetables oh. all the time. She lives in California, right? So in Canada, not so much. So to, if we buy a head of lettuce and we don't process it properly, it's, it's you know, we only have it for a day or two and it goes bad. So a little tip I picked up, I don't know who told me this, I can't remember, but now when I get my fruits and vegetables to home, I wrap them all in tin foil. And when you wrap your celery in tin foil, put it in the fridge, last for a month um yeah um cucumbers uh, anything that you've cut open my green peppers all wrapped in tin foil i'm gonna try that fresh that keeps it really fresh for at least a week or two till you use it up of course so that yeah so that's my my final tip for the day wrap your you know, oh, you, many peaches are coming on, on your tree. Oh, any good recipes? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> peach and cherry jam. Oh, peach jam with maraschino cherries in there. Yum. Peach jam, but you put a maraschino cherries in with them. Beautiful jam. And peach cobbler and peach pie and a peach upside down cake. Peach upside down. Peach something. Peach upside down cake. Mm. Yeah. So um, it was the battle of the cooks when I was visiting Kay. So when she comes to visit me, it'll be the same. I'll have to let her in my kitchen. <laughs> you got, well, a, you got a competition going. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, peach butter. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, peach butter. Beautiful. Well, ladies, thank you so much for supporting our show today. We like to have Fridays to do something fun. So food is always a fun thing to talk about and uh, share recipes and, um, yeah, little histories, a few stories, and that makes it all very fun and exciting. So thank you, Kathy, for being here. Yes, thank you. Thank you in, for having me. It was, fun. it was fun. I like that topic. <laughs> yeah. Nice. And thank you, Kay, for popping in this morning as well. Always a pleasure to see you. Of course, you're one of our regulars, one of our regulars on the Today Show. All right. So have a great weekend, everyone. I'm going to have a little break and then I will be on with uh, Dr. Ramin Modiri for our 28-minute shorter version of our show. We don't stream that show. We just record it for you because it needs to go to Kathy and the boys for editing. But um, Jay, yes. And uh, that's why I said and the boys because I need you to supervise. <laughs> um, and today, uh, Dr. Ramin and I are going to do a short version of our show from Tuesday uh, money and sex, the two things that people don't want to talk about. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. But we do it very, very professionally, and uh, it's a good topic because there are some big connections um, to that, okay? Even when it comes to investing. And Kay and I are both in Dr. Ramin's uh, financial program, so uh, we're not a bit surprised with anything that he comes up with when it comes to money. Last night we learned 
how to invest in grains, soya beans, wheat. Yeah, it's very, very educational. All righty. We'll talk to you all later. Everybody wave goodbye. Okay, bye. <clears throat>The day is set. Join us October 12th, 2024 at Kerrigan Arms for our next fundraiser in honor of veterans, the Invictus Games in British Columbia, Canada, and TDC Employment Program Enrollment. For more information, email us at info at the disability The Disability Channel would like to thank our existing sponsors. We really appreciate the support and kindness from the BIAs across the GTA, Ontario, Canada, and our friends in the USA. We love making new friends. Thank you for supporting our existing employment programs.